Please remember the image of these firefighters. It may be their last mission of their careers. In 2013, the largest wildfire in history broke out in Arizona. Within just three hours, the fire rapidly approached residential areas, and the Granite Mountain hotshots had to quickly intercept the flames. A race against time was about to unfold. However, no one anticipated that just as they finished constructing the fire line, the wind suddenly shifted, and the fire instantly surrounded them. This team would face their greatest challenge yet. This real-life rescue operation was later adapted into the famous disaster film Only the Brave. If you are at a low point in your life, please be sure to listen to their stories. In the United States of America, a fire training base, almost everyone is a muscle-bound man. But this day came a yellow-faced Brendan McDonough, a look at his face to know that this man is a drug addict. So they are very polite to go up to the hospitality. We do not recruit here. Sorry, Brendan McDonough was a little lost and was just about to leave when he was stopped by the captain, Eric Marsh, who decided to give the disillusioned man a chance. During the course of the conversation, Eric Marsh's questions were very pointed. He asked Brandon McDonald when was the last time he did drugs. Brandon McDonald has a very bad resume. Not only did he do drugs, he did jail time and is now on parole. Eric Marsh ended up asking Brandon McDonald why he was here. He didn't expect this Brandon McDonald gave this reason. I now have a daughter and I want to give her what I never had. Just a few days earlier, Brendan McDonough unexpectedly discovered that his ex-girlfriend was pregnant with his child. This child is a part of me, and I will take responsibility, he said. You've never taken responsibility for anything. I will raise her with my family. He had been called a waste his whole life, but when he saw his newborn daughter in the hospital, it was as if life had taken on a new burden. Brendan McDonough decided to live differently. When he spoke about his daughter, his vacant eyes were filled with radiance. Eric Marsh was willing to give this father a chance. He put together a running gear set for Brendan McDonough and had him join the team for a training run up the mountain. However, after running only a few steps, Brendan McDonough couldn't keep up. He gasped for breath and reached only halfway up the mountain, while Eric Marsh had already led everyone back down. Everyone believed Brendan McDonough couldn't endure. One of the team said the guy won't show up again. Let's go. But just as the words fell, they saw Brendan McDonough running toward them like a zombie. He showed Eric Marsh a selfie taken at the mountaintop as proof that he completed the entire run. Eric Marsh patted his back and told him to come to the gathering on Monday at 6 a.m. This meant he passed the test. Brendan McDonough decided to become a responsible person. After work, Brendan McDonough went to the supermarket and filled a cart with baby supplies. He quietly left it at his ex-girlfriend's doorstep. Brandon McDonald's lack of firefighting knowledge led to the entire team being punished. This angered Christopher McKenzie, who already disliked Brendan McDonough. He kept provoking Brendan McDonough verbally, but Brendan McDonough ignored it until he started insulting Brendan McDonough's daughter, and Brendan McDonough became enraged and started fighting with him. Luckily, Eric Marsh intervened in time to stop the fight. After that, they went on to face punishment. Another teammate warned Christopher McKenzie, it's okay to tease rookies, but you can't bring their families into it. Understand? They continued their training constantly racing against time. Soon, Eric Marsh received news that they were assigned to the southern area to fight a fire. It was also a test for them. While rushing to the rescue, everyone was making calls to their families, except for Brendan McDonough, who sat silently. It was his first rescue mission, and he felt uneasy. Later, on the helicopter they boarded, Brendan McDonough finally saw the magnitude of the wildfire. The vast sea of fire engulfed everything in thick smoke. The firefighting team arrived at the foot of a mountain, where they were tasked with building a firebreak. The wind direction was highly unfavorable for their rescue operation. Eric Marsh made a decisive decision to use a tactic called backfiring. He fired shots into the nearby forest, instantly igniting the trees. Another firefighter quickly ignited explosives and threw them in, intensifying the fire to clear out all flammable and combustible materials, thus halting the spread of the fire. That night, the momentum of the wildfire diminished. They succeeded. On the way back, Brandon McDonald's helmet strap was missing, so his teammates used duct tape to secure the helmet to his head. A few of his teammates couldn't help but laugh at Brandon McDonald's antics. Christopher McKenzie pulled out a piece of tape and asked, Is this yours? Everyone burst into laughter. It also meant that they had accepted Brandon McDonald. Jesse Steed pointed down to the now extinguished wildfire below and said, No matter what the outcome of the assessment is, remember that we're the ones who saved this place. This time's rescue operation allowed everyone to pass the assessment. After returning, Brendan McDonough continued to deliver baby supplies to his ex-girlfriend. On that day, as the woman came out holding the baby, she called out to him. She saw the change in Brendan McDonough and asked, Do you want to hold her? He hesitated, saying that he was too dirty and didn't want to soil her clothes. She reassured him and said it was okay. When Brendan McDonough held the tiny baby in his arms, he couldn't help but kiss her forehead. To celebrate passing the assessment, the firefighting team held a grand party. 
when there were no fire operations. They were just ordinary people, husbands who kissed their wives and fathers who played with their children. But when disaster struck, they were the heroes at the forefront. The wildfire this time was extremely aggressive. The team arrived ahead of the spreading fire and began cutting trees, clearing shrubs, and digging a fire break. Then, they started igniting the vegetation, causing the fire to rapidly spread. They also made sure to protect the large tree in the middle, preventing it from being destroyed in the inferno. Once the fire was extinguished and there were no more combustible materials around, they cheered each other on, took a group photo in front of the saved ancient tree. Little did they know that it would be their last photo together. After returning from the rescue, Eric Marsh had a big argument with his wife. She complained that he was completely focused on work and didn't care about their family. Every rescue mission left her anxious, fearing that he might not come back one day. After thinking all night, Eric Marsh made a decision the next day. He told Jesse Steed that he had decided to retire. This would be his final rescue. On the way up the mountain, Christopher McKenzie mentioned meeting a beautiful girl and planning to confess his feelings to her upon returning. They began constructing the firebreak, but to their surprise, as soon as the fire started, a plane extinguished the fire they had painstakingly ignited. It was evident that it wasn't suitable to establish a firebreak there anymore. Eric Marsh had no choice but to lead the team towards the ridge. He assigned Brendan McDonough to keep watch and report the wind direction. Brendan McDonough smiled and bid farewell to his teammates. Unaware that this would be their final goodbye, Brendan McDonough diligently kept watch, and soon thick smoke rose not far away. The fire quickly spread towards him. And within a minute, he was surrounded by flames. Fortunately, another team heard his distress signal on the radio and came to rescue him in a vehicle. They managed to escape. Meanwhile, Eric Marsh had already taken the team to a safe area in the scorched earth, awaiting further instructions. It was relatively safe there, but as the fire grew fiercer, it was about to reach the ranch. Eric Marsh decided to lead the team in evacuating along the escape route, just before the wildfire arrived. They construct a fire barrier in front of the ranch before the wildfire arrives. Teammates received the order and swiftly moved. One firefighter picked up a beautiful stone from the ground, a promise he had made to his son. On the other side, Brendan McDonough also arrived at the staging area with the other teams, ready for further orders. At this moment, Eric Marsh, who was scouting ahead, was horrified to see that the fire was spreading even faster than he had anticipated. It engulfed the ranch almost instantly, leaving them no time to retreat. They had to immediately build a fire line in place and request aerial support. By now, the fire had reached their location, and the supporting aircraft had arrived. However, the thick smoke below made it impossible for the pilot to locate the firefighters. His voice was drowned out by the roar of the plane as it flew straight past, shattering their hopes. The wildfire, accompanied by dense smoke, had surrounded them. With their escape route cut off, they could only take cover in place. Everyone opened their fire shelters and lay on the ground to protect themselves. The flames raged towards them, overwhelming everything. The radio crackled with static, and Brendan McDonough held onto the radio, praying incessantly, but no miracle occurred. When the rescue personnel arrived, all they found were the neatly arranged remains of 19 individuals, 19 lives lost. Brendan McDonough waited for over a dozen hours, only to be faced with this outcome. He instantly broke down. The families received the news and gathered in a sports arena. Their hearts were enduring the most painful torment one could imagine. They heard that one person had survived from the team, and everyone clung to their last glimmer of hope, desperately wishing that the survivor would be their son, husband, or father. Meanwhile, Brendan McDonough, the lone survivor, was on his way to the sports arena. Everyone tried to persuade him not to go, but he insisted on doing so. Brendan McDonough wanted to give an account to the families of his fallen comrades. He stepped into the sports arena with heavy footsteps, his trembling lips unable to utter a word. As expected, when people saw his face clearly, all hope vanished. Brendan McDonough held back his grief and walked out alone, weighed down by grief. Eric Marsh's wife noticed his distress and followed him. Sure enough, Brendan McDonough collapsed to the ground after taking a few steps. She embraced him offering comfort and sharing the pain with him. In the end, as Brendan McDonough had hoped, he became an excellent father. He no longer felt guilty for surviving by chance but felt honored to have known this group of brothers. This is a true story based on the Granite Mountain hotshots. In June 2013, during the effort to extinguish the largest forest fire in American history, only one out of 20 firefighters survived. They were just ordinary men living in a small town in the western United States. The reason they are heroes is not because they perished in that massive fire, but because every time they faced danger, they chose to fearlessly confront it and move forward. I hope my story can give you strength, 
and may each of us have the courage to move forward. With a strong heart, we can all be heroes in our own lives. I'm a movie lover. I'll see you next time.